Hello and welcome back. It's the Clay Golem here. We have just managed to run our first uh, proper little test. So a couple of friends of mine that I've played D&D with for um, oh, over a number of years, quite a fair, a fair bit. Uh, Bella and Dixon joined me as proper players for their first time using Foundry as a player. Um, and my first time using Foundry as a DM, um, we started taking them through Shipwreck Ship Isle. I'll get it right one day. Um, so we didn't spend a huge amount of time. Um, so I'm going to cut to that in a moment and just slice that in so you can watch that happening uh, and a few kind of comments and things as they went through and how they found it and stuff. Um, so remember, while they're experienced players, never used Foundry before, not done this adventure before etc uh, so we pretty much ended up on the beach now i did do something a little bit mean because i do know them um they decided to bring along one character each and they brought along a monk and a ranger arguably the weakest classes they could uh so i was a little bit mean to them on this knowing that they were going to be outmatched in the very first encounter but actually it gave me a much better um uh, leverage for ongoing adventure here with them so there's reason for doing that not just me being a bit nasty uh, I'll cut over to that now now apologies for the volumes of the voices isn't particularly great I think they're quite quiet compared to mine I'm new to doing this and kind of I'm not, I'm not I know I'm not streaming it to be recording that um, so next time I'll do it I'll try and drop my microphone volume down a fair bit to balance those out a little bit so apologies for that but hopefully you can get good insight of how it's worked for them. You'll hear some of their comments um, as they go through. They're well aware that it's being recorded. I'll pop back at the end of the video after that just to give you a little summation of a couple of the comments that they made after the session of a few things we could look at. I'll see you on the other side. All right, so uh, I'm going to kick off then. and We'll just make it up as we go along no drama no pressure um it's mostly about kind of looking at foundry and getting it working and stuff rather than success on the adventure so let's um let's pretend there's a good reason for you coming here your journey was uneventful uh, but the island of stormwreck isle is now visible off the bow and promises rare wonders seaweed shimmers in countless brilliant colors below you in the in the sea the rays of sunlight defy the overcast sky to illuminate the lush grass and dark basalt rock of the island. Avoiding the rocks jutting up from the ocean, your ship makes its way towards a calm harbour on the island's north side. A large open-air temple comes into view, perched on the edge of a cliff high above you. The ship drops anchor at the mouth of the harbour, natural harbour, uh, and two sailors begin to row you ashore. Uh, you have plenty of time to admire, admire the towering statue at the centre of the temple depicting a wizened man surrounded by seven songbirds. So it's perched high up on the cliffside. And you can see that there's a long path that winds up the side of the cliff towards the temple and dotted along the way with doorways cut into the rock and you can see some vegetation of what looks like a small garden that follows the path up. The sailors set you ashore on a beach where a destroyed rowboat lays washed upon the shore. You notice some old abandoned tents around the remains of a campfire. Someone clearly tried to camp on this exposed beach. The sailors point you to the base of the path and wish you good luck before they turn their rowboat around and start heading back. Your visit to Dragon's Rest begins. In theory, your screen has just gone black because I now need yeah. to drop your characters into the new scene. As you pop in here and here. Mm -hmm. I just need to check that I've got your vision set up correctly. I should have done that before we started. Uh, yes, so we've got dark vision on one of you and not dark vision on the other. That's fine. Now in theory you can hear some lapping waves and things. Good, yeah. excellent. You should be able to. You can hear it my side. Alright. So, uh, yeah, so you land on the beach. Uh, there's this scattered 
abandoned camp. It looks like it's been here for quite some time, this ruined rowboat. And off to the, from where you are, it'll be off to the west, to the, off to the left of the screen, is your path that begins to wind up the cliff towards the temple complex. All right, so I assume you're probably going to start heading that direction? Yeah. Okay. I want to know more about the camp. Um... Sure. You're going to explore it? Yeah, I'm just going to do weird ranger stuff. Talk about... All right. See if I can learn anything about the people we were camping here. Sure. Well, you have control of your tokens, so you should be able to move your tokens around yourselves. Um, I've put, got the game pause. Now you should be able to do it. Oh, I, had yeah. the, okay. I had the game pause. Now, as you can see, hopefully you can see exactly, yeah, you're playing with that. You've got a ruler, so it shows how far you can move within your moving distance, etc. Okay, excellent. Stop right there for a second. Uh, the mm -hmm. good thing is, is if you guys are running around, I can just pause the game and it instantly stops you from doing stuff. Um, so as you begin to head up the beach and approaching the tents, you hear a bit of a ruckus of a splashing, wet, gurgling moan coming from the damaged tents. Three figures begin to crawl out of the tents. Their skin is grey and they look as if they've drowned quite some time ago, yet still they move. Their bodies twisted and broken where they've been smashed upon the rocks and rolled around on the beach. As they look in your direction, seawater drools from their slack mouths as they begin to lurch and drag their way towards you. As they approach, the stench of decay becomes mingled with the salty air. All right, okay, so we're going to go immediately into your first combat uh, and hopefully you can see have you got um some people at the top of your screen now yep Com the combat carousel across the top of oh, your yeah. screen yeah. yeah brilliant so on your own characters you can go and roll hit that hit your character um you see there's a spinny dice in it and it will roll your initiative for you hey that's pretty cool it's pretty cool isn't it yeah oh no and they go all the dice all over the place fantastic uh and I'm now going to actually start the combat and we might get some odd noises as we do that. And it's going to automatically put them in order. So just to keep our chat log clean, I'm going to... Did it just delete your chat log for you? Yep. yep. Good, excellent. That means that I can clean up the chat log when it work, when it suits. All right, so um, we are now into combat and this first zombie that uh, because you were already looking and you were hunting around here you're not going to be surprised as this zombie down the bottom here is going to uh, I just need to move my screen make it a bit more obvious uh, he lurches and reaches out with one of his hands and attempts to grab I haven't even got used to your character names yet we've got Boudica yeah, <laughs> yeah. Boudica uh, Bruxum not not buxom nope. you know i'm gonna say that wrong every yep. time <laughs> you've done that on purpose i know, I know you <laughs> okay right just for that <laughs> uh this zombie is going to attempt to hit you so what um just the way combat works uh when it is a particular when it's your go you'll see that your token is highlighted as in you'll have like a probably an orange square around it you can hover over your target and press t so it will automatically write that's who it's going to hit now i'm going to do its attack and what you will probably see in your chat is some information about whether you got hit etc etc yeah. so zombie all reaches out towards you and manages to smack into you doing actually very little damage i'm just going to update your uh character here um you should have have you got a little health bar at the bottom of yours now yeah and it's showing on the card at the top of the screen as well yeah okay so we just want to pop that on there so that you you can see that as well i'm going to just do the same for uh, dixon's as well just because uh, even when you're out of combat, that means you can just see it. You shouldn't be able to see each other's either. You should only be able to see your own. And you shouldn't be able to see the monsters either. 
Okay, right, so this waterlogged zombie has done its bit. And we now move on to the next one, which is going to lurch out of its tent in the general direction of, uh, general. of Shepherd, our halfling monk. Because halflings are awesome for monks. Uh, and we're going to attempt to smack him with our wet, sodden fists. <gasps> Terribly. As it completely fails to hit the slippery little tiny monk as you dodge to one side. All right. <laughs> oh, now I'm stuck calling you buxom. <laughs> A boudica. So it's your your go. So just remember, it should highlight your token already. If you're going to attack, you just need to hover over whatever you're going to attack. Press T to make sure you've targeted it. And then you can select your spell, your weapon, etc. Now, if you happen to cast a spell that has more than one target, something like Bless, you can do that. Just let me know. Okay, I think we'll use the short sword. Okay, so you've selected short sword and now you should have a box asking whether you want to attack using advantage, disadvantage or normal. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, it's in the chat. Okay, attack. Cool. Ah, it's just in the chat, yeah. Oh, normal, so it's normal. It's yeah, going to be normal in this case, yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Yes, you hit. They've got terrible, terrible armor class. <laughs> so now okay. now you can hit your damage. Uh, and that's... Uh, ooh, how do I do the damage? So oh, where damage. you just saw your attack button, just underneath it, it should be a damage button as well. So it might be up the chat slightly. There we go. Brilliant. Okay. So yes, piercing damage is your short sword slides into the flesh it doesn't seem to care but that's not surprising being undead <laughs> it's it's that does bludgeoning. <laughs> sorry i don't have anything that does bludgeoning no. so, oh, well. yeah. it is what it is you know <laughs> good luck with that headbutt headbutt <laughs> is always bludgeoning damage all right so you've had your main <laughs> attack um your main action obviously you've got move and potentially a bonus action if you want to take them mm. i think i'll stay Okay. Probably so what you get an attack of opportunity otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you should be able to end when you're happy. You should be able to end your turn by clicking on your own character in the combat carousel at the top. There we go. Brilliant. And it moves over to Dixon, the mini monk of doom. You're a mutant. Yeah. So did, did you call him a mutant? <laughs> you're a mutant. <laughs> Uh, I was a bit confused about how to do an unarmed attack. Uh, that's fine. So in your character sheet, if I open up your character sheet on my side, um, has it not got... Yeah, so under your the second tab in your inventory, it's got your unarmed strike. So it's oh, as you can okay. see, one of them says one action and the other one is the bonus action. So just remember to target... Yeah, that's it. You've got to target who you want to target. Oh. oh, the game still paused for me, is that? Oh, sorry, I must have accidentally pressed it. I didn't mean to, sorry. Okay, so in the chat you should have an attack button. And it's going to be a normal attack for you. Yeah, there we go. Brilliant, so that hits and you can now 
just under where you hit that attack button, you can hit your damage as well. Oh, yeah. Poof! Punch in the face. Very nice. So, just so you know, from my side, I've got a lot of that automated. So, it's automatically applying damage and stuff, which is really nice. So, I'm just watching you guys make your rolls. I'm doing nothing. I'm hands-free here with my hands in my pants. Um, yeah, because I don't need to do anything. So, uh, obviously, you've got uh, move and a bonus action if you want to take it. Or you can end your turn, which is fine. fine. All right. That was dumb. Can you rewind? I can. I yeah. can do that. I, I meant to take my bonus action. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah, I, I was just demonstrating for the peoples. And yeah, that's very kind of you. Yeah. Oh, very but it's useful. Actually, I've not done that and gone back to a player before, so, you know, it's kind of useful, isn't it? Okay, so now is my bonus action. Yes. Excellent. And you can do your more damage then. It was a hit. So how do we know it was a hit? Because I just told you. <laughs> so on my side, what it does is it comes up and it sh it gives it shows me what your role is, and then it gives me an extra card that says what the AC was of whatever it was you're attacking, and it automatically gives me a green box if you've hit it, or a red box if you missed it. Okay. So we've been working quite hard to try and make it as easy to run as possible. And of course, you know, this is the first time for you guys in Foundry. It's the first time me running anything in Foundry. You kind of, hopefully it will get much quicker. What I didn't want to do is take away your dice rolls though, because that's half the fun, I think, as a player. So I didn't want to remove that from you, but remove as much of the admin from me as possible, because <laughs> I'm lazy. <laughs> okay, brilliant, right, more damage has been done. Now it does, just so you know, if you notice on your token and on your character sheet, you've got a little star up there now, Dixon. That just is a little indicator to go, oh yeah, you've used your bonus action already. So it's just a nice little indicator. You have no bonus action. It does the same with reactions as well. Once you've used your reaction, like that's it, it's used it. Um, and next turn it will automatically remove that and reset it for you. Right, who's the closest one to go for? Well, at stumble through the campfire here. And we're going to move to attack this already injured one. Uh, good. Tasty, tasty wood elf. As it attempts to slam you with one of its fists, failing to do anything. Now you're a little bit more alert. You lithely manage to dodge out of its way as it does nothing useful at all. Um, however, his colleague next to him also flailing his fists in your general direction is also very very rubbish they're even slower than normal zombies weighed down by all of this water that's been absorbed into their flesh and they mostly ah. just flop around in your direction attempting to do something useful and failing okay uh, the halfling is next victim of this more tattered than it was it's got some big kind of punch holes in its flesh um, but this one lashes back at you and manages to club you heavily in the middle of the chest making you take a big step backwards oh my chest <laughs> oh my boobies <gasps> uh, and we're at Boudicca you're up Still targeting the one I hit before. Mm hmm. And to use that short sword. Attack. Nice little animation there as well. Yeah, Swinging a little sword. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's lots of those little bits that we've kind of had built in from different modules and stuff we've added on. I'm not going to take all the credit for it. It's the module builders who did all the hard work. We just kind of got them to work together. Excellent. Uh, you need to do your damage then, please. Okay, so I hit damage. Hey. Oof. 
it notices that as you run through you obviously pierced something as a load of water gushes out that was all collected in a lung or something like that just bursts out of the hole that you have left uh, you've still got your bonus action if you want it and your move of course or you can end your turn when you're ready um, I think I'll end my turn I don't have anything useful for bonus actions okay so we just saw it automatically removed that um, that little symbol from Dixon's character because uh, you've got your bonus action back and uh, you're up I think I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to do my regular unarmed strike. Excellent. Do your damage, sir. Four. Uh, yeah, okay. So, another punch in the face. Are you going to use your bonus action again? Unfortunately, that, that ain't going to cut it this time, buddy. <laughs> All right. So, obviously, again, you've still got your move if you want to use it. No, I'm going to stay here, actually. Yeah. Yeah, those attacks of opportunity and stuff. Okay. We are round to this zombie again that is going to once more have a... Oh, it's... Uh, it's just given me an error because I've attempted to attack uh, a character too far away. I can't press the right button. There we go. Oof. Bit more damage for you. Oh, as it punches you again for another three damage. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, it's not good. Ooh. And the other one down here is going to continue the onslaught. They're just flying their limbs in your general direction. direction. Uh, but this one the, with that's ah. slipping around in its own goo is failing to actually do anything of any significance to you at all. Uh, but now Dixon is going to have to deal with this one attempting to slam. Which also completely fails which is useful. And we're back round uh, Bella, it's uh, Boudicca is up. Okay, we can do this. Yeah, of course you can. Fights are very, very linear at first level, aren't they? We never got any powers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna scream at the zombie and hit it with, attempt to hit it with my short sword again. I know you can't really intimidate the undead, but you can try. I'm just costs nothing to try, does it? <laughs> Well, it obviously worked for you. That's definitely a hit. You can okay. do your damage. Okay, he's slowly getting more. He's, he's finding it more and more difficult to, to move now. All these liquefied insides are starting to slop out all over the place. He's got some <laughs> of his in, bloated intestines wrapped around one arm that's making it even trickier to kind of move. Uh, it's all a bit, it's all a bit tricky. Uh, you have bonus action and move if you want it. Uh, no, I'll stay where I am. And I, yeah, I don't think I can do anything with my bonus actions. So. Okay. I'm okay, sorry, let me... That's right. It's a completely new thing for us, isn't it? Ending your own turn. Yeah. <laughs> it's not something we've done in other BTTs and things like that. Uh, so, I'd like to take up my quarterstaff. Yep. Okay. I've mm. got to have it. I'm assuming that's on your back rather than up your butt or something. Yeah. I I mean, I don't think I have a bag of holding, so yeah, let's say it's on my back. Uh, let's go with that. Equipped, so if I the one in your prison pocket. Is that going to take a turn or an action? Uh, no. Um, well, I mean, effectively, you can use your move. I think it's half uh, your move to do that, and if you're probably not moving anywhere anyway so i'm happy for you yeah. to just just do that for the sake of this i mean this encounter is designed for four first level players there's only two of you <laughs> but i oh, no wonder we're gonna die you're not gonna die you're not gonna die not in the first two minutes okay so 
I'm a, are you using your quarter so that's going to hit before you do your damage are you using your quarter staff one handed or two handed because uh. it's a versatile weapon uh. so it's the uh. difference between d6 and d8 damage what's the difference practically does it use my bonus action no it doesn't actually for you because um, being a monk your your bonus unarmed can be a kick a headbutt an elbow and all sorts of things so it works in combination so to be honest you'd be a fool not to use it two-handed that was what i was just thinking unless i had two of them. Yes. yes well that would be dual wielding that's slightly different <laughs> yeah but i do not and i don't have dual wielding so okay. if i do versatile is that two-handed correct that's exactly it That, that's unfortunate, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> that's really... You're doing better with your fists. Um, but yeah, you can that's get your bonus case. action that as well. Well, just... That hits, yep. Do your damage for that. What? Oh, nine hits. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was about to leave the game in half. <laughs> <laughs> Got a rage quit already. Okay, as a combination of a, a smack and a kick drops to one knee it's not down it's not out uh, well it is down but it's not out as it squirrels around on the floor for a moment grasping out trying to grab you at your legs uh, you can end your turn whenever you are ready excellent so we are back to our zombies laying into our elven friend here uh, let's see how that goes it goes absolutely terribly <laughs> Not for you. It goes well for you. <laughs> okay, just trying to remember which one is which here. And the other one, again, try, attempts to give you a good smacking. This one succeeds, and you're going to take another four points of damage as you're slowly being pummeled and bashed about and bruised. However, two of these look quite critical now. Uh, the last one attacking the halfling has his go. Uh, manages to inflict six points of damage. And oops, I've done the wrong thing. And the halfling. Oh, it's moved me things around in an inappropriate order. <laughs> That's not the one I wanted. Yeah, the kind body. of. It has, in fact, moved my little icons around. I wanted that one. As the halfling falls unconscious. Okay, elf, what are you doing? No. Um. Uh. Panic. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to see if I can dispatch the one I have here and then, I don't know, maybe see if I can run towards the monk. Yeah, so you will provoke attack of opportunities. Remember that you can use your full action to disengage and then move if you wanted to do that. Just, I'm only reminding you of options. I didn't, I didn't know you could use a full action to disengage. Yes, you can. Oh. Yeah. So you can't, obviously you can't have attack. That's the power of the rogues, because they get that as a bonus action rather than a full action. Okay. Well, second level anyway. Um, yeah, well, let's, let's do that then. So to move, um, do I deselect? You should just be able to drag yourself. So yes, you can do that. That's no problem at all. So you've used your move, you've used your action, but only be if you've got a bonus action to do anything with. Um, I don't think smacking the... <laughs> I don't think smacking Shepherd would be a bonus action. So I am... <laughs> I just remember, it's not sleep. <laughs> like in Boulder's Gate, where you just throw things at the other party members when they're asleep to wake them up. <laughs> or you throw the party member at another party member. It's like, no, <laughs> don't do that. 
Okay, you can end your turn whenever you are ready then. Okay, uh, obviously it's uh, on your character sheet. I need you to roll a d20. I need you to do a death save for me, please. You want me to just use the death save button? Y yeah. Because oh, it popped out automatically for you, didn't it? It, it did. It just did. Just Yep. Uh, so death save successes. You've got... So did it show you show you what your role was for that? It did, yeah. It said 16. Okay. And then it's got one of the little but the little dots saying death save success. Okay, cool. So you can see that for yourself. That's uh -huh. good. All right. So just as the elf gets to you, as you're laying there, beaten to a crap. Um, like I say, this is designed for first levels, um, but it is designed for four of you, um, rather than giving you double characters you guys know what you're doing you're not idiots you've been playing long enough um but as this zombie lurches in ready to take a bite out of the downed halfling clearly going to consume him it suddenly stops falls forward and you notice it's got a crossbow bolt a small one crossbow bolt in its back as it collapses to the floor in front of you Several more small crossbow bolts ping out from over by the cliff edge and manage to take out the other one. Only one remains that slowly lurches forward, pursuing the elf as before, and will take its attack. And it is going to inflict up damage and the half elf also it was half elf, weren't you? Wood elf. Wood elf, sorry. I do apologise. That's what an insult. To <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> apologize bad. most wholeheartedly. And your last view as you attempt to dodge uh, this creature, the last thing you see is a band of kobolds charging down the beach towards you firing crossbows small hand crossbows left right and center all over the place peppering zombies that's the last thing you see before you lose consciousness that one all right um i'm going to because we're doing this kind of as a video, I'm going to uh, call this to a halt on the video right now. But you are going to regain consciousness after being rescued by kobolds. Because I know you will never live that down. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm back again. Um, hopefully that was interesting, uh, watching that. So they obviously got to grips with the, um, the roles and everything really quite quickly. Um, no particular drama there. Yeah, I was really mean to them, but if you want to annoy people that you, you love and care about, get them rescued by kobolds. <laughs> Got to be one of the biggest insults you can give anybody, rescued by kobolds. Um, so uh, we did kind of just finish off with them uh, regaining consciousness in the, uh, yeah, actually in the town of Dragon's Rest itself. And of course, they probably owe these kobolds something for saving their life now. A little extra plot hook. Um, so a couple of bits of feedback they gave was generally really good um, the sounds of the waves that you can hear in the background here they quite like that they like the atmosphere um, obviously when we get to things like the um, we get to the caves and we've got all that dynamic lighting and things that'll be really interesting uh, and they have said they're willing to continue doing this um, perhaps once a week just for an hour to take us through most of this adventure so that we can see those different scenes that we've built and stuff a couple of things that they were um, the, the, um, the feedback weren't criticism but feedback they said was with things like dice rolls so I've still got all the chat up here um, they are seeing damage dice rolls even when hits aren't made so where it's automatically doing that so they're getting a little bit of bit too much spam in their chat um, which is fair because we did kind of put everything on so there's a couple of settings like that I want to look at and just reduce the amount of chat, um, the chat spam they get. So if the monster rolls to hit and doesn't hit, the, it don't show them the damage. Only show the damage once, you know, if there's actually a hit involved. 
Um, and again, part of that is debugging and stuff. So we can do a little bit like that. Uh, and the very last thing we did at the end, and we saw it in one of the demo videos, is when we end combat, it is, you can see in the chat here, the last thing in the chat had that pop-up back pop-up box about experience uh, and it automatically allowed me to assign experience to them now they didn't actually defeat these monsters although they did survive the encounter albeit with a rescue um, so normally I wouldn't have assigned them XP on the basis of the fact they got rescued but um, just in the interest of trying it uh, I did click the button and it has indeed if I open our uh, Boudicca our half elf here we can see that uh, top right of the character sheet we've awarded 75 experience points so that working really really nicely um, at the end of combat uh, that's nothing to do with me setting up the um, Boudicca's bandits it's nothing to do with me awarding experience points directly into this group okay now in fact the reason why that says 1700 is from when we were playing before so this is not about me awarding experience through here. It's awarding experience at the end of the combat automatically, which is really, really nice. So I hope that was enjoyable. Um, like I say, I uh, will do some more videos this week uh, before we get back to, um, to playing our next round of this, probably next weekend, uh, and uh, just another hour of it. Um, and they will be doing adventures in and around the, uh, the town itself, around Dragon's Rest. Uh, and hopefully off to one of the other locations, such as Seagrow Caves, which will be quite interesting. Cheers for watching, guys. Take care.